was one of the most uh, stressful last three minutes I've had coaching. And, uh, and we were fortunate that uh, we survived the first, the first wave of the BU assault in the third period, where I thought Rawlings played really well. Uh, I thought we were pretty composed in the D zone, despite the fact they had uh, a lot of quality possessions and chances. And then when we got that goal uh, to make it, uh, I can't remember what that score was now, 4-2 uh, on the power play, I think that, that, that was what gave us that two-goal lead again. I think our bench settled down, and uh, and obviously I think you know, the game settled down a little bit. But um, you knew it was coming. We're up two to one in a, one of the best you know programs in college hockey history. And there's a lot of pride over there, and I, I told them before the period started that we got to keep it simple. And despite the fact we did do that, I think BU did a terrific job coming down the walls and basically owning the puck. And, uh, the last three minutes I started this interview with were, uh, were bizarre, but uh, we're, we're thrilled that we won five to four, and uh, it's a great win for uh, for our university and for uh, particularly for our seniors. Coach, talk about it. you just said the last few minutes were among the most stressful. It's kind of surprising when you think you're up five two. You don't expect it to be quite that stressful. You know they're going to come at you, but. What, what went on in that last couple of minutes that made, made it so tough for you? Well, I actually told uh, Sebastian and Albie, I said, I hate these part, this part of the game when the other team has their, their do or die situation, so you know, you're going to keep pulling the goalie. And I told our team to relax. I don't want to be a potty poop, but there was still you know, three minutes to go in a game with it against an extremely talented team. Um, and for the most part, we played pretty good when they did pull the goalie. It was just... Uh, you know, some of the decisions we have with the puck, you know, throwing it back towards the blue line and things as a coach you start to worry about. But uh, the penalty late in the game bothered me a lot. You know, it was, we're up so it's 5-3 and we take that penalty and, um, and they get, instead of being like whatever it was, 15, 16 seconds to go and it's a neutral zone face-off, really innocent part of the game, they score and now, you know, now you're dealing with a, you grab and try and grab a tiger by the tail. I think this is the first time this team has won on the road since 1991. There's a one game quarterfinal. What does it say about the way this team began the season to finish this way against a team that doesn't lose it very often? You've got better facts than I do, John, with all these numbers and these dates. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, it says a lot about it, and I and I and I told uh, I might have told you guys after last game I had a lot of belief in this group that. Despite the fact we started out one seven and, and four, whatever it was, the team didn't really carry carry themselves like that. They're a confident group. I wouldn't call them cocky. I just call them a very quietly confident group of kids. Um, and really, your, your team is driven by your leadership. And those those seniors, Silva, McNeely, McLeod, as a line, and Hugh and, and Goosier, they've been through a lot of battles. They may not have been the same level as you know the. You know, Pereira at BU in terms of winning national championships, but they've been through some battles, and uh, the word that keeps getting tossed around is unflappable, and that's the way, that's the way they were uh, this series as well. I mean, we played, what have we played, four straight games at, at BU, we had, we've won three out of four, and, you know, that's, that's a pretty impressive stat. How about Chris Rawlings, three saves on six uh, shots Friday night? Did you ever did you ever waver on starting him tonight? Did you ever remotely consider starting Clay Witt? Oh yeah, we did. We 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 kicked it around for a while. Um, you know, Clay played well enough to deserve a start, but uh, I'll give you the inside scoop. Um, Chris has played about four really poor games uh, over two years. I mean, he's given up goals and stuff, but really poor games technically and just his body language in the net. And all four times, this will be the fifth now, he's come back and played really well. And that's really what I hinged it on. And our goalie coach wanted to go with, with uh, Clay, and I trumped him on it, and I went with Chris. So who knows, Clay would have done well as well, but I thought Chris was terrific. What did you say to uh, Coach Parker at the end of the game? It seemed like you were saying things in his general way. Yeah, we were upset. I was upset because I wanted my team to shake hands with BU. I mean, that was a great series. But I was, un, I was unaware that the, the referee 
had told our team to exit the ice without a handshake. So the BU players were upset and yelling, yelling at me, which I would have done as well. You know, why, you know, classless with all these things. So I went over to ask them what happened, and then one of the BU players came by and yelled at me. And I, I kind of turned and I, and I grabbed him by the, it was Clendenin. I didn't know what he was yelling. And I said, it's not my choice to, to kick him off the ice. You know, we're not kicking him off the ice. And then Jack yelled over, you know, what's going on? And he wasn't being provocative. He would just ask me what was going on. I mean, it looked, it, I thought it looked really poor that this is a great series and we're exiting the ice and the BUT who lost the series is waiting for us to shake hands. There was no precedent for it. There was no memo before the game that that would happen. I really didn't think it was that bad of a blooded game. And uh, the classy thing to do, and this is college athletics, is to walk through the line and shake hands. So as the head coach, I took some abuse for it. And I was wondering, trying to explain it wasn't, it wasn't my decision. I actually tried to go back and get my team off the ice, and Timmy DiBenedetto grabbed me and said, no, it's over, the game's over. Coach, um, it seems like you got out to the bench a little bit late before the game. Was there something going on in the locker room, or was there a reason for that? Before the game? Yeah, it seemed like you kind of came out like during the national anthem, like out to the Oh, that, I, I do that. He always does that. He always does that. He usually does that, yeah. I was trying to find the print the memo that we weren't supposed to shake hands. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, it's, it's been obviously an up and down month since the Bean Call, which is now going to be a month more since the Bean Call lost the class. What can you say about just the metal of this team kind of to, to stick with things when you were gone and now that to be able to come in and win a road series? Well, I, I think a lot of that metal you speak of comes from the way they played uh, in the six games I was gone. I mean, Sebastian was by himself. And that's a, that's a heck of a challenge for a guy. He, he was by himself coaching a team in the worst stretch in, in, of games in college hockey, period. Um, and I think the, the, the team, I think, they're mature enough to understand that, and that there's an absence of a couple coaches. And um, I, I knew then that, um, you know, at the time we weren't sure we'd be in the playoffs, I felt comfortable we'd be in the playoffs, that we could do well in the playoffs, particularly on the, uh, the heels of the bean part, which may have been one of the best college games in a long time. So it's always an expression that I, I, I was watching Rod Woodson from the uh, Steelers talk about the uh, locker room in Pittsburgh. And he said, you know you've got a team when, when you uh, don't need the coach to give you direction. I think that's kind of the mentality these guys have, have uh, taken on. Coach, all weekend you've been talking about how you wanted your team to cut down on penalties. You only gave BU six power plays tonight, which is definitely an improvement. How important do you think that was to winning tonight? It was huge. I didn't think we were going to win the game if we gave up nine, ten penalties. I just didn't. I think BU's power play is extremely good. I think they had three power play goals tonight. It was a matter of time they were going to break free. Um, and what we did was we showed them, we showed our team just the, the clips of the penalties we were taking, which for me were. Time you're taking a penalty in the neutral zone or the offensive zone, there's really no threat of giving up a scoring chance for a goal. It's it's foolish, you know. And I think that that, that sunk in. Um, and I thought tonight that we played we played hard and we, we skated and we had the puck. And usually when you have the puck, you know, the other team's taking the penalties. <coughs> I thought BU had the puck the uh, first two games quite a bit. Brody, this is your uh, first crack at it. So you're only a freshman. How does it feel to uh, not only move on but get to get to score two goals in the game? Yeah, it's definitely a good feeling. You know, you know, first time playing playoffs, college hockey. You know, you don't really know how important it is until you get here, and uh, you know, it feels great, and especially beat these guys. And you know, it was a tough series, and lots of people doubted us, but you know, we just battled through and uh, got it done. Have you ever seen a situation like that where you're facing the same team five times in a row? Uh, not really. You know, I played back in juniors. We play a few uh, seven-game series, but nothing like that. Four straight games on on their ice. It was definitely something new for me. Looks like Milan robbed you right before your last goal. The really nice save, and it must have been five seconds later you got it again. What was going through your head in that sequence? Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I was a little upset. I missed the first one, and uh, you know, Pim and uh, Don Gar was working the puck low, and I actually got more open the second time, and uh, you know, I wasn't going to miss it. Brody, uh, you had the shot that. Led to the goal that put you guys up three one, and then got the goal that put you up four two. How important was it to get those goals to put, 
to kind of you know give you guys a two goal lead and not let BU tie it up. Yeah, it was you know it was it was important because you know I thought he might disagree, but I thought we came out and we were playing on our heels a little bit, starting third, and you can tell the guys were a little nervous on the bench, and you know but we were playing to hold the lead it was kind of like we we're waiting for them to score. <coughs> so uh, for us to come out and you know like the goal was huge, I think it kind of gave everyone a bit of relief and. Uh, you know, help calm the bench down and give the guys more confidence. You haven't played that much with Dungar and him and that combination. It seemed like on Fridays, guys didn't really know where you were on, where each other was on the ice. Let's talk about the change in that line from Friday to tonight. Yeah, Friday was a bit of a tough game because there were so many penalties. We didn't really get into a rhythm five on five. So, you know, I played with Rob most of the year, and so I knew, I know what he does. And, uh, you know, I practice a lot with him, and he's a good friend of mine, so we know where each other are going to be a lot. And tonight we got more of a chance by five and five. And you know, as the game went on, we got better and better. So it just kind of worked from there on. Brody, when you do play four games in the same building on the road, does it, do you get a little more comfort that, than you might have if it's just one game or two games? Do you, do you, does it take some of the mystique away when you can kind of come back to the same place four times in a row? Yeah, for sure. It was, uh, you know, with all the support we had from our fans, it was almost like a. Uh, not, not a home game, but you know, we felt like there was a lot of support for us. And uh, you know, when you're here for three games on the weekend, you, you get used to the rink and uh, the atmosphere and stuff. And uh, obviously, our fans helped out a lot. So, final question: oh, Brody, How much confidence do you guys have? I mean, not only you win here, but you're up against a national champion. You're one, one, and one against them, and you won the last game against them. Yeah, you know, I think right now we're pretty confident. You know, that you know, being BU is a big, uh, big step for us for confidence for sure. And uh, you know, we know we can play against B, or sorry, BC, and you know we beat them before and took them to overtime. And uh, you know, I think we're going to go in with lots of confidence uh, on Friday, and uh, hopefully we can get the job done. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks.